You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Jenny. This year we've already checked out the Yaris GR and the i20N and now we're checking out the brand new 2022 Polo GTI. When we did the i20N review, we did reference against the Polo GTI a lot. Now the i20N is a terrific car, it's such a great drive thanks to some really good engineering. So why did we mention the Polo GTI so many times? Well, that's because it is a benchmark vehicle in this hot hatch segment. It's what other brands are aiming to surpass or at least to get close to. This new one is better equipped and more expensive than the previous one. But Volkswagen don't half bake a cake. Or should I say, we don't half bake a car, yeah? But does it justify the price? Is that good? And how does it stack up against the growing competition from the mentioned Hyundai, but also the inevitable Toyota and Ford? Ooh, so much to unpack. But before I do, a quick message from our video sponsor, Carly. So, what is Carly, you ask? Carly is a diagnostic and coding tool for your car. The way it works is you simply download the Carly app on your phone and then plug this small device into your car's OBD port. Once the scanner is connected, click Health on the app to run diagnostics. This gives you diagnostic insights into your car's health, as well as options to perform some coding and maintenance functions, all from the convenience of your phone. Whether you sense an issue with your car, would like to code some more features into your car, or are just someone who likes to get a better idea of how your car is running day to day, then Carly is an easy and affordable solution for you. Find out more by visiting www.mycarly.com or check out the link in our description. And now back to our regular programming. In terms of design, the 2022 Polo GTI gets a bit of a revamp. The Matrix LEDs really elevate this beyond its lower category. You just have to love this trickle-down approach of manufacturers nowadays. Some cars have got advanced features that would be pretty unimaginable back in the day. The headlights are connected by this sweet LED bar. The front is differentiated from the standard Polo due to its bespoke bumper and this nice honeycomb design here that also incorporates these small LED daytime driving lights. The wheels are 18 inch and they look awesome. And they don't have run flat tires and personally I'm glad because they're just too harsh. If you end up with a punctured tire, there's a space saver under the boot floor. The rear has a bespoke diffuser and twin exhaust pipes. It's what you'd expect from a Polo, but with more distinction and flair. Volkswagen buyers are used to up-to-date, yet more reserved styling, and they appreciate it. On the other hand, GTI buyers expect their Volkswagen to stand out without being obnoxious. So the Polo GTI ticks both of those boxes. The Polo GTI is powered by a 2-litre TSI turbo petrol engine with 147 kilowatts and 320 newton metres of torque. Officially, it consumes 6.5 litres of fuel per 100 kilometres, which is overly optimistic. With our slightly heavy footed driving, <coughs> Amelia, we've been averaging about 7.5. And officially, it covers the 0 to 100 sprint in 6.8 seconds. So this figure isn't optimistic at all. In fact, I'd say it's conservative. But here's how it stacks up against its rivals. With the i20N getting from 0 to 100 in 6.3 seconds, the Fiesta ST getting it done in 6.5 seconds, and that Super Yaris, the GR, in 5.1 seconds. Now, because I can read minds, I can hear you saying, come on, Jenny, get to the driving. So. I will. Being turbocharged, all the torque comes from just 1,450 revs and goes all the way up to 4,400 revs, which makes the GTI feel very responsive and encouraging. If you still somehow manage to strain it, despite having such a wide torque curve, there is a nice DSG to help you out. But it's not the latest seven speed DSG. Not sure why it shifts really fast, much like you'd expect from a dual clutch gearbox. I mean, it does get a bit stiffer in the top sporty mode, but it's honestly not much different from standard. Suspension and handling are awesome. This means it's confidence inspiring, very direct and composed. Feels like a hot hatch, even when you're not pushing it hard. It just has that grunt. What does make a difference between the different driving modes is gearbox behavior, steering weight and throttle response. Everything becomes more immediate and hence more engaging. Pair that with a stiff suspension setup and you get a great driving experience. Now, one thing that's lacking, and most people will appreciate it actually, is just a little bit of that fun unpredictability. But both the i20N and the Fiesta ST are more lively when it comes to braking and turns. They just feel like a kid enjoying a race, whereas a more mature, experienced sports driver will probably have more fun in those because of that lack of predictability. And they both come with a manual. This car feels a bit like a video game you've played a million times. You know exactly what it can and will do, which is great if surety 
and certainty are things that you value. That predictability is reassuring for most people who are not professional or wannabe racing drivers, including myself. So the Polo's approach may actually be the winning one. Aspects of it feel tamer than its rivals, but at the same time, it's a little bit more refined and fancy pantsy. It can be an everyday car for errands or your daily work commute, but at the same time, easily can give you a sporty thrill whenever you need one. It's the cool, savvy city slicker, as opposed to, that's it from the bibs. Even that engine note has that nice purr to it. It lets you know, hey, I'm sporty, but I'm also refined and cultured. I spend my nights out sipping fine milled scotch on a rooftop lounge bar, as opposed to doing burnouts and racing through the industrial area with an interior strobe light and 20 inch rims. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the interior. After sitting in the Yaris GR last week, it just makes me appreciate how nice this interior is. Sorry, but yes, Yaris made me appreciate it. In terms of design, it looks sophisticated and modern. Nothing too ambitious, just minimalist and really got that urban chic vibe. Unlike Polyaris. The tech is where the Polo GTI really stands out. The digital dash is standard across the range and it looks awesome. The 9.2 inch infotainment screen looks pretty large in a small cabin like this. And it's an increase from eight inches in the pre-facelift model. It's got navigation, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are both wireless and cabled. The screen is positioned really well. At first I was kind of worried if that would be glare at certain angles, but it's actually been so clear at all times. And just look at that resolution, it's amazing. Amazing. It also comes with Beats sound system, which is very nice. Got some good bass happening. The front has two USB-C ports as well as wireless charging. There's really more than enough space for both the driver and the passenger up front. Up front, the GTI has different seats with more lateral support. So when you take those tasty corners, <laughs> up front has plenty of storage. One gripe is that these cup holders are a little smaller than I would like. They can fit my can, but can they fit the mega thirst quencher? No, they can't. See, that's just not practical for me. And I guess my other gripe is just that this section from here to here reminds me a little bit of 2002 Nissan Pulsar. Is that where you got it? Maybe Europeans drink from narrower cups and bottles than we do down under. But overall, the GTI is ergonomically splendid. Space in the rear is less accommodating, but it's actually decent. In the back here, you get two USB-C chargers, bottle holders in the door. There's no armrest, so this is technically a seat. Questionable. And yeah, no vents. Okay, so clearly hauling adults on cross-country trips is not the target market for the Polo GTI. But apparently people with a decent amount of cargo are. The 351 litres in the Polo GTI is pretty good for this category. And actually a bit more than in some cars, which are a full size up. Well done, Polo. Of course, you get the standard stuff like ABS, EBD, brake assist, heel start assist, multi-collision brake assist, anti-slip regulation, electronic differential lock, and extended electronic differential lock, ESP, and similar. Now for the price. The Poly GTI costs $38,750, that's MSRP. That makes it about 5K more expensive than the pre-facelift model. However, Volkswagen says that they have added more than $10,000 of new equipment in it. So even with the price increase, it still might be a good deal, but I'll let you decide that. Now here's how it lines up against the competition. The Hyundai i20N is 32,990, the Ford Fiesta ST is 33,490, and that Yaris GR starts at 49,500. For the Polo GTI, you get a five-year unlimited kilometer warranty, as well as roadside assistance and capped price servicing, which costs 1,400 for three years or 2,750 for five years of coverage. Ultimately, you're paying almost 39,000 for a pretty small car. Sure, it looks better. It's so fun to drive feels better inside, and it's just better car overall. I suppose it boils down to whether you want this kind of car or not. So if hot hatches are your cup of cake, then the Polo GTI is absolutely worth it. And while I love the wild nature of the i20N or the Fiesta GTI, I would prefer them theoretically. You know, for those rare times where I might be on a track, but with the added confidence and that DSG, I feel like the Polo might be a better choice for most people. Thanks again for watching Cartel TV. So what would be your choice in this category and what do you think of the Polo GTI? Comments below. And ich sprechen gut Deutsch, ja? Hey.
you'll see in the next video. Peace.